Before I open the meeting to the public, I have a statement to read. While we appreciate the residents' feedback, the board does not entertain personal matters in a board meeting. Board meeting format. Personal matters are sensitive. As such, the board welcomes your feedback in a private scheduled menu at the main, main office. Please contact myself, the village clerk, or the village administrator to set up a meeting. Could you say that a little louder? I really didn't hear you, George. <clears throat> While we appreciate residents' feedback, the board does not entertain personal matters in a board meeting format. Personal matters are sensitive. As such, the board welcomes your feedback in a private scheduled venue at the main office. Please, please contact myself, the administrator, or the village clerk to schedule a meeting. Does that mean that the uh, comments are, are available to the public, or does that mean that it, that is always privy to the board and never reasonably presented to the public? It probably will be, and maybe not, depending on the nature of it. What's the nature of it? I said, if, when, you, when you start at personnel, it should be done behind closed doors, not in a public menu. It's, if, if something is made, but it's not necessarily to personnel, but it is of interest to the public, that's, that's not a problem. Or, or, or people that have requested that something be done publicly about it, is that possibly worthwhile to be available to the public, or is that to be in private or secret or whatever you want to call it? I believe it would be up to the board. The board after, decides if it's public? If, if uh, after the consultation with the people, whether it should be public or not. So in other words, you can't make a public comment about any person uh, or issue because the board has to approve it before it goes no, to the public? In other understand. words, it's managed news, George? You, you've got to understand that when you make comments about a person and the person's not here to defend it, it's not fair. Well, well should, should the person say that I tend to make a comment about a, a particular organization and I must insist that that about person be there I, to, I, in order for me to make I the said comment? I'm sorry, George, I can't hear you. I said personal, not an organization. I have something to read that, has to, that was done publicly, and I think it should be publicly announced. I would uh, officially like to do this the proper way. My name is Andrew Vincelette, living on 85 Maple Street. And I would just want to change the topic a little bit. I know Trustee Martin, you're going to be touching on the wine tasting a little bit later on. Yes, I am. But um, I'm speaking on behalf of the center stage that came to me because they, they like how I do things, apparently. Um, the wine tasting, it was to their understanding that they were going to have to have a roped off area and police or something along those lines um, needed to be able to do that. The question they had was the farmer's market at the yeah, library the doesn't have to. They so, should be doing the same. Okay, that was one but thing. They're not tasting wine. So they are. Tasting they're getting free samples. They are. Samples I um, there's two wine. wine vendors and they both are doing it. So I will check on that situation. That was just one thing. thing. All right. Plus um, good for one is good for all. Okay. And, and if I'm taking up too much time, just let me know, board. No uh, Another thing is the steel sign. I know that the sign is coming in pretty soon uh, for right out from here. And Ray's Appliance, that big steel sign that they have there they, on the corner, I don't know what it is, that one-way street and Ray's, uh, they're willing to donate that sign to Ross's Point as long as somebody from Ross's Point can take it out, free of charge. Okay, so I don't know if you can do that, Brian, or if the board can consider that, but that's, uh, that's 15, 20 feet up in the air. You won't need the whole sign, but it's a free steel sign, and that may work. That's going to save us a lot of money. Yeah. Um, 
And again, the jewelry sales, I'll wait till you talk about that. They were just wondering whether or not. And the, uh, the last thing for the stage is the coin drop. Uh, we don't want to step on the fire department's toes whatsoever. Um, it's a good thing to have and everything, but in the past I had to speak, uh, I, had, I was asked by the center stage if they could do a coin drop. And Carol looked into it and said nobody from the village is allowed to do so uh, for our insurance and all that stuff, it's unsafe. And I said, is that including the fire department? And she said yes. So that meant no coin drops whatsoever. And, you know, if you're going to allow one group to do it and not another, we're just wondering where you're going with that. Um, but that's just something for you guys to think about. And then for personal notes, when I was walking out here, uh, three of the vendors told me that they aren't going to come back next year uh, for a definite. Uh, the, for example, like the, the horses uh, on kids' night, they said they spent more money on their own food than they did on rides. Uh, the bouncy house wasn't set up till 4.30 at night. And, uh, and the other three vendors, which was the food one that was here, the one that was very cross D and D's, and the, the one that was doing the blankets and stuff, they all said that they're not coming back. So I don't know if we want to try to get that committee going or a little bit more publicity because a lot of people remember when this whole parking lot, nobody could park in it, you know. But that's all I got. You took enough time. Thank you, Board. No, nope. thank you, Mayor. Well, I know Ben Arno, 104 State Street. I know the Sons of Legion is not putting up a booth down here next year either. So that's four. Just to let you know. That's four going on five possibly. Yeah. So. Right. I'm Shirley Hall from Lake Street, and I have a letter, and it's concerning partially uh, my uh, uh, neighborhood watch group, and on uh, and this all resulted as a neighborhood watch group uh, contacting me on June 16th, uh, 2015, at, at approximately 12 noon. Gordon, Bob, and I were in the, enjoying coffee, tea, and a snack, and a friendly conversation in the Lakeside coffee shop. Scott Bouchard, in the uniform, came in and approached me about what I said at the last board meeting. Scott challenged me as to what I said at that meeting on June 15th, 2015. I said, I spoke to somebody on Smith Street about the incident, about garbage cans being overturned. People have spoken to me about such happenings and concerns before, so I started a neighborhood watch in our area after an article in the newspaper concerning the lack of police presence in Rouse's Point. Chris <coughs> Dukes, owner of the Lakeside Coffee Stop, and others were upset as well as my, my husband and I. Chris asked the conversation to leave. Gordon, my husband, and Chris said stop and asked Scott to leave. I was most upset of the verbal attack and I came home to take medicine so I would not get into a stress attack. Scott should not go into a place of business to attack the public who is concerned about the village safety. The village board should have guidelines for public employees. I am not now concerned about further harassment. If it should again occur, I feel it would be necessary for me to go to another agency. This letter should be set, put in Scott permanent personal folder if he does not have one, one should be established. I believe Chris spoke with George Rivers that day, and I know he spoke also with Jean, and I know Chris has written a letter, and she spoke with me today, and she hopes that that letter will be read. Publicly. Publicly, as to what happened in her establishment. Thank you. Also, uh, a while back, we were having trouble with the chipper trucks. 
as you all are aware of. And no, nothing seemed to be able to be done about it. So Gordon and I were driving through Swanton one day, and the gateway to where the truck, truckers go was open. It's usually no trespassing. But it was open because they wanted, they were looking for people to hire. So I said, fine, I'm going in. I went in, and I spoke to the supervisor there. It definitely can be controlled. She spoke to them. I gave you all. Carol made a copy for each one of you to have. If you have any comments from anyone, please call these, this person. And it is all Burlington Electric Department. The trains are right there. They dump the chippers there and they're put on the train. I saw the whole process. And they said they had many complaints. And something can be done about it. And I hope that we will be able to continue through this board to what was see it? about it. And it has, uh, the trucks have slowed down since I spoke to them. Tankery. They're going too fast, you're thinking? They're going way too fast, yes. And, uh, and they have slowed down. So they have spoken to, so it has helped. So how long is this going to last? I don't know. Maybe they'll have to be reminded periodically. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, uh, Andrew. Sorry. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I won't have change tonight. <laughs> oh, come on. I feel like I'm down the old man. <laughs> Andrew, we want to thank you for your time on board. This is present, presented to Andrew T. Menzel at recognition and appreciation for his dedicated service to the residents of Villager Ross's Point. A village trustee, 2014 to 2015. Congratulations. Well, thank you. And we'll miss you. Yeah, I think. Not that easy, yeah. <laughs> and if you people do not know this gentleman, he was appointed trustee in Andrew's place. That's sure. My age and name is Ken. <laughs> Joe the Fredma. All right. Anybody else from the public want to address the board? If not, you'll have a chance at the end of the meeting. Uh, minutes of the previous meetings, June 15th, 19th, and 22nd. It's a busy month. Make a motion to accept uh, regular meeting minutes of June 15th, special meeting minutes of June 19th, and special meeting minutes of June 22nd. Second that. Moved by Trustee Martin, seconded by Mr. Trudwell, the Trustee Trudwell. All those in favor, vote by the usual sign of aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carried. Bills. We all got copies now. <laughs> we have two additions tonight. Uh, the first one is to U.S. Bank. The amount is 282.68. That's the lease payment on the copier. And the other one is NYSIC, a monthly bill for 7,470.62. Ryan, what's the uh, us far in a cutoff saw for dragons for 9:35? It's a new wheel chop saw. Was, was that the other one burned up? Or? Yes, it's the cylinder was scored in it and got too many hours on it. Must be some saw for 900 bucks. Yeah, it's a commercial cutoff saw that they use pretty much so by weekly. You got in a fire station like? It's got a big wheel on it, okay. carbide wheel. Yeah. Cuts concrete, steel, cuts everything. Any other questions? If not, entertain a motion. Make a motion to pay the bills. A motion by Joseph Treadwell. Second. Seconded by Trustee Martin. I'm going to get the trustee on there yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, any discussion? There being no discussion, all those in favor of vote by you to serve. Sign of aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? The motion carried. All right, correspondence. 
Uh, the first letter I have is um, to Donna Bomeo. As you know, my family and I are relocated to California in August. Therefore, my last day working as a library page will be August 1st, 2015. Additionally, as we discussed, my last day of doing the cleaning at the library will be June 1st of 2015. It has been a great year. I've learned a lot and had a great time assisting you with the fun and educational programming the library provides. I look forward to visiting and seeing continued growth and use of the library in the next few years and would love to help out as a volunteer during future summer reading programs. And this was from Sarah Diaz. She's the page over at the library. Make a motion to accept her letter of resignation. Can we get a letter to her after her? Oh, yeah. I'll second that. Moved by Trustee Martin, seconded by Trustee Crudwell. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, all those in favor of open meeting of Santa Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. The next item I have is Roses Point Fire Department. Uh, dear Mayor and Trustees, the Roses Point Fire Department respectfully requests permission to apply for the 2015 Volunteer Fire Assistance Grant administered by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. The grant application is for $3,825.34 for the purchase of two sets of firefighting turnout gear. This grant requires a match of 50% of the grant amount of the $3,825.34. The matching funds are available in the fire department budget, requiring no additional funding beyond current appropriations. Thank you for your attention to this request from Michael LeBlanc, Fire Chief. Motion to allow for the grant. Second. Moved by Trustee Martin, second by Trustee Ma. Is there any discussion? The next item I have is the letter that Mrs. Hall gave me. Do you want me to read it, ma'am? Go ahead. Okay. Dear Mayor, Trustees, and Village Administrator, I'm writing this letter to report observations from herself and another employee regarding an incident that occurred at Lakeside Coffee on Tuesday, June 16, 2015. Um, on this date, Shirley and Gordon Hall were in her shop along with their friend, and they were seated near the front of the store enjoying a meal together. The Halls and Mr. Miller are regular customers, often coming in on a daily basis. On this day, uh, police officer Scott Bashard came to the shop while these customers were present, and he was dressed in uniform. He did not come to the counter, but proceeded directly to where the Halls and Mr. Miller were seated. A conversation was initiated between them. After a moment, it was clear that the tone and volume of the exchange was heated and unfriendly. At that point, a customer had left the store, and they observed that two women sitting nearby were becoming uncomfortable with the situation. So she decided to intervene and interrupted the ongoing exchange between Mr. Officer Bashard and the Gordons. Um, she told her this was the appropriate place to be having this conversation, and they were making the customers and my staff uncomfortable. And she went on to say that this is her restaurant, and she would ask that uh, they take it elsewhere. Um, let me see, at this point, Officer Bashard looked at her and did not say anything and looked back at the halls and she went on about what took place. A few more sentences were exchanged between them and then followed by him leaving the premises. Her staff and she would, could not hear the content of the conversation, but it was clearly unfriendly in nature. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And she listed below the names of the individuals that were there, her staff. And this is from Chris Deuce, owner of Lakeside Coffee. Thank you, Carol. And then Mrs. Hall already took care of what she had. Given. Nothing else, Carol? That's it. Thank you. Report of Mayor and Trustees. Uh, first of all, I want to express my sincere thanks to the Gilroys for the job that they did putting on the parade and, and the fireworks this year. Uh, uh, again, I'll say my side comments, and it's not to get against the Gilroys, because they busted their home, but what took place with them. Right. And I, I, I can't say enough, this, this village was packed from end to end. And I, it was a beautiful parade. Second thing, amending mayoral commissions. As you know, Trustee Vincent decided to leave us, so we had to replace them. <laughs> so 
the commissions that he was on, uh, we just put Joe in the, Joe Treadwell in his place. In that streets and sidewalks, he's the second. On uh, electrical systems, he's second. Drug control and storm storage. I got him and Mott. Now you got, yeah, who else would you put on flood control? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's chairman. Planning and development, he's chairman. Uh, Civic Center and Parks and Beautification Shade Trees, he's second. And library, historian, and senior youth and welcome center, he is the chairman. Okay. You can make a motion on that, please? You don't have to. Well, are my appointments. Okay. Okay, uh, township or municipal board authorizations. Is this yours, uh, Arsene? What this says is the Scanner Bank resolution is just allowing me to change the name of the deputy mayor um, on the signature accounts. I'm not going to read it because it's a three-page resolution. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> All right, I need, it's a roll call vote, so I need a motion. Making a motion to allow our son to change the name to the deputy mayor. So it's going from Joel to June. Correct. Yeah. Second. Uh, motion made and second, roll call vote, Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Ma. Aye. Trustee Treadwell. Aye. And the mayor votes aye. Okay, amendment number one, the third party custom agreements. The custom agreement. And this, what is this, Carol? That's our sin also. Oh. That's a... Uh, Champlain National Bank is amending their uh, third party agreement, custody agreement with us uh, for... Um, Soil agreement in regards to the uh, deposits. Um, I believe they're they are uh, they're switching something with uh, manufactured MT and T Bank. Well, it's just a standardized thing, and it's just it's just something we have to go through. Now we need a motion to accept it. Motion to accept it. Second. Motion by Trustee Martin, seconded by Trustee Treadwell. Roll call vote. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Mott. Aye. Trustee Treadwell. Aye. And the mayor votes aye. Okay. Discussion. The MUA will celebrate its 85th annual conference at the Crown Plaza in 101 Olympic Drive, Lake Plaza, September 15th through the 18th. Um, of course, you know that there's another one right after appointing uh, me delegate, delegate to that. But is anybody interested in going? Is that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or is that maybe Tuesday, Wednesday? I don't have a calendar in front of me, but I will. That's for all three days, or can you just. Uh... No, it's all three days. It's a uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, that's in September. September. Yeah, I don't care. John and I both are that thing. <laughs> I don't have that much time off. So in only two days, I'd be able to get that off and go. Oh, no, no, anyway. Way. It's an interesting trip. Jean and I, I think, will be going if she's up to it. <laughs> I need a motion. I make a motion to allow for you, for you and Gene to go. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Make and, okay, we'll get to the next one next. Drop the two, two people go to the meeting? No. Second. Moved by Trustee Treadwell, seconded by Trustee Martin. Uh, all those in favor, vote by the usual sign of aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. And the next thing is a resolution as delegate for the MEE. You a meeting, which is unfortunately me. I need a motion to that. It's roll call. Well, I haven't got that far yet. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> 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 Make a motion. 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 Make a
make a motion for George to be delegate to the Union UA in that. Second. Moved by Trustee Mott, seconded by uh, Trustee Martin. All, all roll call vote. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Mott. Aye. Trustee Treadwell. Aye. And I vote aye. Keep going, Mr. Mayor. You're not done yet. Update on the, if you people haven't noticed or people haven't noticed, uh, in front of the village office, there's two electric car charging stations. Uh, the power authority in New York, of the state of New York, uh, gave them to us free. <coughs> and they're set to go. Uh, we're trying to get the press to do a press release. I called them a week ago. They have no response. <laughs> but uh, uh, they're there. And it's a dollar an hour, and the board has to approve that. It's a dollar an hour to use it. Somebody it was a dollar no, per kilowatt charge. No, dollar an hour. Dollar an hour? Yeah. Yeah. How long does it take to charge a car? Anywhere from three to five hours. I see. How much power will that take in an hour's time? Work? More than a dollar? I haven't got a clue. Well, before we, we should do a test on that first before well, we actually, actually, it actually costs us more to run it for three hours. I think, I think it was it was a dollar per kilowatt, kilowatt hour. That's the way I read it. That's also an hour. It was a kilowatt hour. It could be either way. Either way. Some people charge by the hour, and I think we sat down and discussed it. Our son and I, and he said, you know, if you're charging for a kilowatt, and they used uh, in an hour, they used five kilowatts. Is that what you're thinking? Well, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know electricity that Because it, it has not it has not been officially set. Is this what that did it cost to put them in? What? What did it cost to put them in? Wire and thirty amp circuit to it. That's it. What? Twenty five dollars? Fifty dollars? I don't have got a clue, Daddy. Well, it's, is this something that we can change the price on if we find that? Yeah, we just have to call the company. We just have to call the company in. The way this crazy thing works, you got to have a smartphone. And there's a, one of them, whatever they call them, mm -hmm. on each phone. And they're dedicated to each unit. So if you're using unit two, you put your smartphone on it. They, and then you push whatever you have to do to contact the company out in California, believe it or not, right? And they turn it on. And when it's finished, it's charged to their credit card and we're sent the money. We have a big demand for that in the village? No, no, we don't. But you know what? Uh, Riley Ford's got one in. Price Chopper's got two down there in their parking lot. And they charge nothing. Right? Does anybody use them that you know of? No, they just put them in. They just got, yeah, they just got and, I, I, and I doubt that they'll be used... But they very open to I have I have I have three, four cars, John, you probably have some yeah. too. But George, the way you're making it sound is like it's very cheap, but in fact that it's the highest we can charge, correct, the dollar? Yes. Okay. okay. Just to clarify that. But don't forget we're only paying a cent and a half kilowatt. I know, but I'm sure it's more than a dollar an hour. Is that what they charge you on your electric bill? A cent and a half a kilowatt? Who? Power authority charges that. But supplemental power is a little bit different. Oh, okay. So you're boosting it, George, huh? No, we're not boosting anything. <laughs> we're just getting our money back. <laughs> okay, George. You guys got anyway, to e-connect. You got to e-connect e uh, a handout that we were discussing at the last board meeting, and I believe the maximum rate. I don't have my copy with me. Mm -hmm. That maximum rate, I think, was a dollar fifty an hour. Maximum rate, $1.15 an hour, not a kilowatt. I believe so, yes. Yeah. Yeah, most, I went over that whole thing. most places were going by the hour instead of the kilowatt. It only, it's, like, it's only like two or three kilowatts an hour or something that these cars use or something. According to this. Well, that's the only reason I asked is if, you know, if it's going to cost us $3 an hour, we're going to make it a dollar. <laughs> and they're going to, what it costs us is what they use in power, which is cent and a half kilowatt, or whatever we pay our cent. So I, when you add in incremental, 
I think they got it now. So they're paying with their credit card for the actual power. Yeah. Right. And yes. we're and we're going to get a dollar an hour just no offered. No, service. that's what we're charging. We're going to get what if they have it five hours on there, we get five dollars. So it's by the hour. I think. I'll tell you, this whole thing is vague. I have called the power authority and asked them to send me a press release on it. That was a week ago. I haven't heard a word. So tomorrow Hopefully May. by the next meeting, the next couple meetings, somebody, yeah. somebody will have used it and we'll know, you know if yeah. you get anything back and how, how it all works. Yeah. If it takes them My five hour. hours to charge their car, hopefully they're going to some of the local shops. Well, the other thing you got to understand, like Joe said, he's got two or three motors that come down. Mm -hmm. The, the electric cars now can get up to 70 miles on a charge. Right. So you got people coming from under all, oh, that's only 50. Uh -huh. But they sure now need a charge to get back. Yeah, they do. <laughs> well, the ones that I have, they just plug into the regular outlet at the marina. But I think this is designed for somebody... Electric to, car? Yeah. 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 I think this is designed for somebody traveling that doesn't have any place oh, to plug so in. That's it. I'm right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Which they could because they could be going someplace shopping and there's an opportunity, but the key is... Yeah. It's one to know that it's there, I guess, and like yeah. you say, with a, you know, a little bit of, you know, press. We well, myself, I think it's in a bad spot. I mean, especially at the village. I mean, if it was in the parking lot here, you know. It's at the village so we can keep an eye on it. Oh, well, we'll try it and just see how it all works. See if it pays, see if it doesn't pay. But we'll I mean, you've got a lot of cars that park in the front of the village office. No, we won't be able to park there anymore. Well, I guess apparently and not. Two, at least two slots. Yeah. Right. So we'll take a little out of Yeah, let's wait for an update. Wait for an update? Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Budget mod modification. Our sand. What are we doing? Uh, well, I was asked to prepare a resolution to move monies that were not spent in the police budget last fiscal year to this fiscal year and to move $9,000 from the fire department budget to the police department budget for personal services. So under the general fund, your net result, we're going to increase your appropriated fund balance 15226 account 960, increase appropriations 15226 In the water fund, we are going to decrease appropriations 599.04 for 636 Account 960.04 decrease, appropriated fund balance 636. In the sewer fund, we're going to decrease.